a liver transplant can be required in two main sort of scenarios. One is in the setting of acute liver failure. Uh, most of these patients are very unwell. Uh, patients are admitted to hospital um, acutely. Um, I'd say that's quite rare overall now in the UK. Um, and then the opposite setting is that when one develops chronic liver disease and develops uh, liver failure, that can be um, development of jaundice, so yellowing of the eyes, development of fluid in the tummy area, which is called ascites. Uh, and then these patients require consideration of liver transplantation. Um, everybody needs to have an assessment. And if you think about it as an MOT, we not only look at the liver, but we look at the heart, the lung, the kidneys, but also the psychosocial aspects as well. So these are the two main clinical scenarios. So, so after um, a patient um, is uh, assessed for liver transplantation and their uh, indications are accepted, you go on to a national waiting list. Um, patients can also be considered for living related uh, liver transplantation and that involves a separate assessment of the potential donor uh, and then essentially it's surgery. Um, you know patients can be called in at any time um, and then surgery can last um, anything between six hours to eight hours. Um, in the UK all surgery is performed in very experienced centres uh, with very good outcomes. Liver transplantation is very safe. We, uh, when we talk about outcomes, we're looking at uh, five-year outcomes. Uh, we don't talk about 30-day, 90-day or one-year survival rates anymore because we want pa patients to benefit long-term. Um, as part of the assessment, like I said, we would uh, assess patients uh, for other diseases which may not be uh, sort of clinically uh, obvious uh, and that's why we look at the heart, the kidneys and the lungs uh, but once you're assessed for liver transplantation uh, then majority of patients will go on to be transplanted. So once patients are accepted onto a transplant waiting list um, you are listed according to your blood group uh, and then there is a national score called a uh, transplant benefit score, which is calculated and modified and adjusted um, as one sort of remains on the list. And the whole point of that score is to identify those who would benefit the most from liver transplantation. Um, however, one can wait up to um, a year uh, for transplantation. Uh, so, you know, one has to be quite patient as well. But the whole point of the score is that if you deteriorate, then your score may increase and then your likelihood of transplantation may uh, also improve. Recovery, I would say, is directly related to how well one is going into liver transplantation. Um, I would say most patients would remain in hospital for a minimum of two weeks. Um, a lot of that is about uh, painkillers, but also looking out for any complications after the transplant. Um, but And also part of that uh, time is also spent educating patients on their medications, when to take it, how to take it, what sort of uh, you know red flags there are, if there should be any concerns. Um, once patients are discharged, then they would be seen weekly for the first month, then two weekly, then three weekly. Um, it, it, it depends, but uh, all patients would need lifelong clinical review. Uh, but once you're stable on your medications and you're well, uh, it could be an outpatient review every six months. Um, so the longer you go out from transplant, the sort of longer the time period between clinical reviews.